So hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tony Hoffman's Fabulous TV Show. I'm so excited to have you all on today, um, telling the Facebook people and tweeting and all of that kind of fun things, you know, to let everybody know that today we're talking about public speaking. We've got fabulous people like Miss Janet. Um, if you've got questions, let us know and reach out anytime. Um, I also want to make sure that everyone's got um, all of the contact information. So always go to publicspeakersassociation.com. You can not only find me and send me a message, but you can also talk to these lovely people that are on the line also. If you're on Periscope, go to Public Speakers Association because we'd love to connect with you. So today, what I thought I'd talk about is public speaking. So Janet, I know you use public speaking quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, what is your favorite part about public speaking? Being able to impact people from the front of the room in a larger format. Yes. And just being able to be with people. You know, you get a bunch of people in the room. In fact, mm -hmm. I'm speaking tomorrow night. So it's, you know, one of that's what I love. People always ask me, why do you love public speaking? And for me, it is one of the most fabulous things to do. Jim is always so loud. Um, it, you see the light bulbs go on. If you have a business, um, there is nothing more exciting to see right there in front of you. People go, ah, I got yeah. it, right? Um, you know, and then there's times when I'm always blown away, you know, when someone just starts crying, you're like, I impacted that person that much, you know? <laughs> so, you know, it, it's one of those things that I got really, a, being an introvert, you know, I always love showing people my introvert picture. Oh my. So this was me in 2005. <laughs> and people were like, no way, you were not an introvert. This was at a holiday gala. All right, everybody. This is the way I dress. It was about right. not showing up. And... It was so much fear. And when I just spoke in front of the first people for the first time, um, it was incredible because it was five lovely ladies who all loved me, right? They all were there to support me and everything. But what happened is I would shake and sweat. It was awful. I was like, oh my gosh, but I got the bug because you just saw, I mean, a word would come out and someone would be like, oh yeah. And it was like that instantaneous Oh, someone gets what I'm saying. Someone gets what I'm trying to to go, do for yeah. them, right? <laughs> oh, well, Periscope just dropped. I'm gonna get Periscope out of the way. All right. Who knows what happened there? I always try to do two things, and and that never seems to work. Does that work it for you? Because it never seems to work. Seems That's to like work multitasking. <laughs> The total line yeah. that every job description wants you to multitask. It's like, really, you want me to do half-ass work? Oops, sorry. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's just kind of reality. Um, so I wanted to give you all some real insight today um, about public speaking. Um, you know, I own, I'm Tanya Hoffman, the CEO and founder of the Public Speakers Association. And I also own the Career Speaker Academy. And people always ask me usually two things. How do you get booked? And then once you are booked, how are you going to make money? So first I wanted to go over some, you know, kind of reality tips and you could probably jump in here, Janet, anytime of what's, you know, what are some of the fallacies, the, the crazy things that people still think about the speaking world. So the first thing is, is that when you're up on stage and you have something green in your teeth, people care. <laughs> <laughs> People don't care, people, you know, they don't, they're there to learn something from you. And they don't care how big your nose is, what your teeth look like, what your hair looks like. They just want the content. Don't you feel like that, Janet? When you're in front of the room, they're just there to absorb because people are selfish. Yes, anyways. I could. Do. There was a time when I was speaking in front of about 100 people when my shirt came undone for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Yeah, <laughs> nobody told me. They said, we didn't want to embarrass you. And I said, as opposed to me standing here in my bra, thank you very much. But we just went on, and it was a relationship course. So I said, well, we're now related. Very. <laughs> they there don't. you go. There you go. 
they don't care. You know, that is one of the things that was so hard for me. So you've got, you know, say you've got 20 people. Now, realistically, this is another thing that people are like, oh, I'm going to speak in front of a thousand people. Most speaking is in front of 15 to 30 people. That is the average size group that you're going to speak in front of, even if it's a webinar, if it's a teleconference, I don't care what it is, 15 to 30 people. So if you're out there going, oh, I don't want to speak in front of a thousand, a thousand people is so rare. A hundred people is rare. I mean, that's getting into some big events. So realistically, what we're looking at is that speaking is about marketing yourself. It's about marketing your concept and what you're trying to teach people. And that's what they're waiting for. They're waiting for you to teach people. So Janet, when you go out and speak, what do you usually I have speak a, I, I mean, my bottom line is I want people to own their power, magnify their brilliance and make a shit ton of money. So it's somewhere in that genre. It's so like I'm speaking tomorrow, tomorrow night. Um, to a group probably around 30, and it's about uh, magnifying your power in networking and in meeting people and how you present yourself and talk to people. But really, ultimately, it's about owning your unique gifts and being great because so, so many people minimize how great they are from some past nutty oh, yeah. thing that they decided about themselves or how many times they failed <laughs> that they don't speak it. But it's like, I, I want people to speak their own greatness and we will shift the world that way. Exactly. And we got a comment about that. It is about appearance, but what people focus on are things that doesn't matter. You know, yes, you want to show up you know, in the moment, right? You're wanting to be the professional in the room. You're going to walk in and they're going to go, that's the speaker. But what we tend to focus on for what most people focus on is the things that people don't care about. You know, oh, I need to lose 20 pounds first. You're going to keep yourself from going out and changing lives because you need to lose 20 pounds, please. You know, those are the kind of things I'm talking about. Yes, show up. <laughs> You're supposed to be a professional. <laughs> I do have seen people are like, really? That's what you would wear on stage. But you know. <laughs> and, and honestly, yeah. I mean, I think the point that I can't read at GTX, I don't know who that is, but <laughs> that you're making is very valid yeah. is it's got to reflect your brand, but how I appear is a reflection of how I feel about myself and what I'm trying to project. So the way I was trained 20 years ago to speak is that how I dress reflects that, but it shouldn't be loud and stand out so that people aren't concentrated on out, out, you know, about it, but crazy, silly things happen. And if you let that take you out versus what your message is and your purpose. That's where I think what you were speaking to about who cares if you've got something you yeah. can teach. That's, that's all the mind game. Well, and I've seen people burn and crash on stage. I mean, do a terrible job. I mean, even I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is a professional. And, you know, with this one lady, she's so lovely. She's brilliant. What she knows is incredible. And she was stuck on that PowerPoint and the PowerPoint wasn't working. And it was just like, let it go, let it go. But even with the, just, it was entire mess. Her information was solid and she still had two people come up afterwards and want to hire her. And this is what I want to get across to everybody. It doesn't matter about the entire room. Because this is another thing, especially for you ladies out there. I know for a lot of guys, you know, my husband's like, I don't care what people think. But for us ladies, we always want everyone to like us. <laughs> and you have to look at the room. And so say 25, I always think of 25% of the people automatically don't like you. They will never buy anything from you. They don't agree with what you're saying, whatever. There's just something about them and you, just let it go. They do not matter ever, okay? Let those people go because there's 25% of the people who are loving what you're saying, who love you, who are ready to buy something from you, who are ready for you to change their life. And those are the people that you focus on. Now, what most people do, and this is why they don't make enough money as a speaker, 
is the 50% that's left over in the room, most people don't do anything with. They take the people that are 10 to 25% that are like, I'm ready to buy something from you today, and they forget about the rest. That other 50%, you have to bring them in. You have to continue the conversation. You have to get them into your newsletter. You have to get them into your social media. You got to continue to talk to them until they're ready for you or ready to leave, right? We love the people who leave. So again, don't ever look at who opts out of your newsletters. Just don't do it. <laughs> don't play those head games with yourself. <laughs> Can I say something about that? Here's how I always, I always yeah, yeah, do yeah. it. It's like, look, there are going to be people that are your fans. There are going to be people who don't like you. And that's fine. If people opt out, they have self-selected that they are not your fans and you're not speaking your message. And for me, if they're not there, then it allows somebody else to be there because you are never going to appeal to everyone. So don't try. I, you know, I have a message. Not everybody agrees with my message. No problem. I'm not going to make them wrong, but then I will attract the people that are attracted to what I'm about. Exactly. And, you know, one of the interesting things, too, so you've got, you know, the two components. How do you get booked and how are you going to make money? Right. And one of the things that people don't get is how the speaking world has changed. And it's all about building relationships and filling out forms. So you have to get really used to filling out a form. You find out about the association, corporate conference, industry conference, TED Talk, you know, you name it. There's usually a form to fill out and submit. And then it's up to them to choose you because they usually get, you know, a lot of people who want to speak there or you're building the relationship. So if Janet's putting on an event and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I would love to speak at Janet's event. It's about me building a relationship with Janet and figuring out how do we leverage our relationship so that we can help each other. Um, I bet you I do, do that a lot. Janet. I, and and it's all word of mouth. The other thing to your point about filling out forms, if they reject you, don't have it be a personal rejection. So people say yes and no <laughs> all the time. To me, yes is a great answer. No is a great answer. It just leads to different path. No is next. And no is not yes or sorry, no forever. I mean, I'm speaking at a a yeah. conference, I'm keynoting at a conference that Texas Courier and Logistics. It's truck drivers. My market is primarily women. <laughs> but, you know, I got that gig. It's great. I will make a difference for them because that's what I'm committed to. You know, that is such a brilliant because I fill out 80% of everything that I send out to the Public Speakers Association members. So I send y'all email and you open it up and there's a different associations and everything. And one of the things that they'll look at is apply because the person that's usually booking for these, there's two types of people. The person that is a part of the association or that is connected within the company or something that's booking. The other one is the people outside. So you've got all of these incredible people that are mm -hmm. event planners that help people put on these events and choose the speakers and everything. So they're doing multiple events. So they may say no to that yeah. particular event, but they may be going, I need to contact this person for a keynote or something. So that's done. Mm -hmm. That's happened a lot for me. And um, let's see, it says, um, is there an average price tag that you bill yourself at? Um, so one of the things to look at is the speaker's fee. And this is one of the things that I wanted to get out of y'all's head <laughs> is that 90% of the speaking world now does not pay speakers. All right. 10% does. So yes, I will take a speaker's fee. My normal speaker's fee is 15,000, but most people's average is about 2,500. Um, but even then, you know, I am going to take it no matter what they're going to offer because it's about getting in front of them. So most people call it free speaking nowadays. And I'm like, there's nothing free about it. I call it investment exactly. speaking. So this is what people, this is why I created the Public Speakers Association in the first place, is I found that people didn't know about all the speaking opportunities because there are so many. So I'm just like constantly sending them out, right? Janet is like, is like constantly, especially lately, you know, they're like, ah, they're throwing them at me. 
um, so that you have an opportunity to fill out the forms and submit it. But those are going to be free spots, free spots. You've got to invest a thousand, fifteen hundred if it's local ish, maybe, you know, a hundred to five hundred dollars investment for you to go there and do your thing for an hour, hour and a half, whatever it is. So the realist realism of this whole thing is that myself and my friends about 2010 looked at the speaking world and go, why are they paying speakers? Because if I can go in, if they're going to pay me, I have to go in, do my thing, and then I'm out of there. There's not a lot of connectivity. Nowadays, you can kind of negotiate some things in, but it didn't make a lot of sense back in 2010 because I just saw 100 people, 30 people, 1,000 people that I didn't get connected to long term. I it didn't even make any sense. So myself and my friends were like, well, how do we get booked over somebody else? We don't charge a speaker's fee. And then we negotiate back of the room so we could do back of the room sales. Now, what's happened for most speaking nowadays is you get booked and they don't allow you to sell there. So, for example, I just went to the special event. It's like the worst name ever for an event, but it, that's their name. They've been doing it for 30 years, so I guess they'll keep it. <laughs> so I went to um, – when spoke alongside Les Brown. It was free. It was priceless. Yeah, you know, and Les came to my – by the way, Les Brown came to my event, and I didn't pay him a dime. He paid all of his expenses, his hotel, his flight, everything. Um, so if you don't think the big guys are doing that, they are. Um, but – you look at, I went to that event, it cost me $1,500 or so to go to that, but I got to to talk to all these amazing people. There were 5,000 people there. I had a room of 250 chairs. So when you start looking at the opportunities that are out there, it's massive. I walked out with $7,000 in mm -hmm. my pocket, and I haven't even started doing the follow-up at that point, right? So a lot of it is about follow-up. And what um, what you can do with that. So what do you find, Janet, when you go out and speak? Do you find that there's a percentage that you usually kind of kind of equate to? I don't know if I've got a percentage. I've never done the math on it. But I do think if you're working it in, so you're peppering your speech, then your clients will find you, even if you're not allowed to sell. So if, for example, this talk I'm doing tomorrow, I was just working on practicing that and recording myself. And I've got three different places in it that are, it's not like a marketing thing, but it is peppering. So it's like when I work with my clients, I do this. But since we only have a short time tonight, let's, and I'm going to take a little gift of what I do with my clients and work that in. That's going to hit somebody. Then I'm available at yeah. the end or they have my contact information, which I make sure they have. And then I'm going to get somebody at the end. I always get something out of no matter how small the speaking engagement is. And even it may take six, eight months. I just have a high end client that just signed with me that I spoke someplace. I think it was about 10 months ago. So you just never know. They went on my list and it, it hit them at the time it hit them. And it's like Randall was asking, you know, was these book sales? And I mean, I've got six books and I've got another one coming out and I'm doing a co-authored book series with people. So I've got books, but I do not take them with me. If I sell books, I'm getting and mailing them to them because who wants to travel and carry that many heavy books? Um, so that's another great marketing tool for y'all too, is to throw a book in as a package, as a bonus to other things that they're going to be selling. And these are things that we, you know, teach you through the Public Speakers Association is what to sell at the back of the room. It's usually group coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, trainings, corporate trainings. If you're trying to get into the corporate arena, there's nothing more effective than public speaking because they get to see you in action. They get to hear what your, you know, viewpoints are, what you know. Um, it's just incredibly effective. Um, and, and what's great, too, is what I have always found, and you may um, have something different, Janet, is 
when I look at the big corporate events that I've spoken at and some of the big keynotes, it wasn't the person in the room. It's someone they knew. They're like, oh, my gosh, you have to go check this girl out, you know. Uh, it's just incredible the opportunities that are yeah, created. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in fact, I'm thinking as you're speaking that, I'm like, I got this keynote from a workshop I led in um, April and somebody that was in the workshop. Yeah, yeah. You just, you. that's what, um, there's two things that I was shocked when I started getting into speaking, you know, so I got out of my introvertness finally and started speaking and I couldn't believe the, how lucrative it was, right? There was nothing faster for marketing because you were standing there and you're the expert, you know, ha, ah, you know, and even when you're just starting out, you're just, you are the person in the front of the room. They are the followers. You are the leader. It are automatically boosts you away from the group and makes people go, wow, I don't care who you are. You know, if you're just getting started, it really has nothing to do especially if you're just getting started. It's a great way to really supercharge yeah. yourself is to get out there and start speaking and start, you know, connecting with people. The other thing is this, just the opportunities, things that have happened that I'm like, what, how did that happen? It's the incredible opportunities that are created from speaking in front mm -hmm. of a group. What do you, let me ask you, because I get this question asked, you know, I've been speaking in front of people for 20 years, so it's different. It's hard to even remember what it was like when I began, but <laughs> what do you recommend to people where they speak when they first start? You Are you a Toastmasters is... fan or, see, I've never been, because it's like, you know, that puts you in the, um, I don't know. The, I'll tell you the, why I started the Public Speaker Association. Oops, got an echo. Um, one of the things that I saw in Toastmasters, it's really designed for the boss to help their employees be able to talk to him, to do presentations in front of a group. You know, it's very much a... Um, I'm, I've got an echo with you, Janet, all of a sudden. I muted you just to let you know. Um, so it's a, a great place for people who are wanting to be employees and talk better in front of their company. It's a great place for them to do that. Um, for entrepreneurs, and if you're wanting to be a real public speaker, it really takes you into the realm of perfecting you too much. So in order to connect with the audience, you have to be relatable. And if you're doing everything right and you're positioning yourself, and these are things that's good to know. So you don't, you, if you need kind of that, I need to just go out and speak in front of people, it's great. But use it also and just understand that don't – you want to say um. You want to say you mess up because it makes you relatable. Um, do you find that with Totally. Janet? I, um, did you take me off mute? No, you're on. Okay. You're on. I and turned you're down on. my speaker, so I'm hoping that'll help. But it, that's what, it, I think the difference is if Toastmasters teaches you presentation. So if I'm presenting, which is more like teaching, not interactive, and speaking to me, what makes me a good speaker and the speakers that I admire are people who you doesn't matter if I'm in a room of 100, you feel like I'm talking to you because I am. I'm relating to you as yes. from person to person. I practice like a crazy person, but just to put it behind me so that I can be with people. So I don't have to worry about like I'm not memorizing a speech. I'm dealing with yes. what are the spaces that I want to deal with? What am I committed to as an outcome? So absolutely. That's why I wonder, what do you, how do you train uh, brand new speakers? 
what I always tell people is to go out and just speak anywhere you can just speak. You know, you go to the rotaries, you go to the chambers, you go to the, go to meetup.com. You know, if, if there's ladies in the group that are like, you know, I, I really want to talk to mommies. There's a million mommy groups. If you're a guy and you're like, I want to talk to, you know, guys with German shepherds, there are groups for that. <laughs> there's so many groups out there. And even if they don't have an official speaker, um, then one of the things you can do is just contact the person and ask them, do you have an opportunity for me to come and speak to your group? I would like to offer this. And most people will. They'll be gra grateful to have you come and speak in front of it. Um, another thing to do, and I can't get that echo out. Jim, ever since you came on, is the echo is there. I don't know. And, and I, can't even, I can't even mute you, Jim, just to let you know. Um, there you go. <laughs> um, one of the things to always look at too is when you're going out and speaking, virtual is amazing, right? Doing these blabs is amazing. Being on people's radio shows is incredible. You've got all of these platforms now to get out there and get in front of people, all these millions of networking groups. So there's no there's no reason you can't get out there and start. So Jim, why don't you give us your two cents about speaking? Um, yeah, and thanks that for on having me show. on. Um, when I started speaking, I had written three articles and that's what I did, Tanya. I just went out and I said, listen, I wrote these three articles and I started getting booked. I had, my friends said, just do it. And I did. And that's what's led to some of my early success was uh, I did that and it worked. So I can, I can tell you from personal experience, that works. Yeah. Yep. And even for my husband, he's going to be doing exactly what I did at the beginning. And I've got an echo again, Jim. Um, one of the things is find a way for you to make yourself go out and speak a lot. Um, because I was such an introvert, remember? introvert and I was like how do I become a speaker and get used to people speaking well one of the things is creating it for yourself don't wait for things to happen so I created a little meetup group back then it wasn't even meetup back then but just a little networking group and I stood up in front of people every Friday and I thought if I had to stand in front of 20 people every Friday I was gonna have to get over the shakes and everything and you know it works um, so you just can keep pushing yourself to do it. And that's why I created the um, Public Speakers Association, because we have virtual events every month. So you can get your message out there at the exact same time you're practicing <laughs> and lead Jen every time. You got all those fabulous people that are listening. Bring them into your world so that you have an opportunity yeah, I mean, to connect uh, with I them. did the same thing. Jim, I had a meetup some... group uh, actually still active, and we had uh, – once a month, we had different event, different topics, and I can tell you, I saw people stand up very scared, uh, but it, we all realized we're there to encourage each other, support each other, and many of them have gone on to do great things, and me too. I mean, I wasn't the greatest speaker. I, don't, I think still I have ways to go, but uh, I think that the, the PSA platform for me and others has given them the, the ability, the community to connect and moving forward. And uh, I highly recommend check exactly. out the PSA. We have virtual summits. We have chapters all over Canada here in the United States and check it out. But uh, um, we can always get better. And I think that we have to get over those butterflies quick. And you want to get into the money faster, if that, that helps. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And how about you, Miss Janet? How did you get different. started speaking? It's funny. I'll tell you a very brief story. When I was uh, young, like high school young, I thought I wanted to speak, write, and travel, which I now have done. But then I had some incidences in life where I said I'll never speak in public again, including falling flat on my face uh, in front of a group where I had been the head of the uh, – it was a fundraiser – and I was like, I'm never doing that again. And then I did a, a, a transformational program and actually got that that was just some decision I made. And then I just, I, I literally, I remember the first time I had to get in front of, and it was larger, it was like 250 people. And I was shaking. 
And I just, I cried through it and I just got through it. And then I hired a speaker coach who videotaped me and all my concerns about myself, I then got to see were all in my head and not in reality. And then I just went from there. And I, I mean, I've been in front of exactly. 31,000 people. So I've spoken a lot. <laughs> And now it doesn't, you know, it's great. But I love what Jim brought up too about, you know, I never thought about like, I'm a member of PSA. I think it's a fabulous organization. I think what you've created, Tanya, is phenomenal. But even just having <laughs> having a um, meetup for people just to practice yeah. meeting would be awesome. I mean, in Austin, there's so many meetups. So I think that's awesome. Yeah. I know that. Yeah, I think also, I think also you're in a neighborhood. Well, you just have to ask a few friends. Go ahead, Jim. Saying, do you know any places where I can go and speak? Uh, lunch, uh, open mic, lunch and learns. You'd be surprised how quickly you can find out where you can go and speak. So just ask. Uh, get an email. Phone for a few people. You'd be surprised. There's lots of right. events happening. It's kind of like when you said open mic. I have the the picture of you know yeah. karaoke's people, and I have a friend who's a comic, and she goes to open mics. We should change the whole setup at, at bars that do karaoke to be open mic speaker night. It'd be fun. Right. And there's so many things that you could create yourself. If you're, you know, fearful of doing it, make yourself do it. I've got a little message for myself. It's on a little post-it note and it says, wow yourself every day. And that reminds me to push myself. You know, you got to like, I've got to do this. I've got to try something new. You know, the first time you do blab, the first time you do whatever, it's my, always going to be a little. My first blab, my first blab was a disaster <laughs> until Tanya swooped in. <laughs> I'm, I was so nervous. We, Tanya made it happen. We, we, we had a great conversation. So it happens to me too. So <laughs> I can share from experience. Oh my God. It happens to everybody. I've had major players <laughs> on this show and they're a total disaster. Okay. And we're talking some of the top speakers in the world and you find out really quickly what people are really like uh, when they uh, can't get something done. It's interesting, <laughs> but uh, I've had fun here. I've had a few PSM members start their own blab show. Uh, we've had technical issues. We just pushed forward and, and got it done, but this is a great platform. I love it. Uh, I think it really brings more engage engagement uh, for everybody. And uh, you know, the story I'll share, you know, when I when I started speaking, people have said to me, you know, that's all you're doing. You know, well, I'm doing a lot of things, but if you start getting uh, a habit, so my thing is, you know, you build on those habits. Um, you know, the last uh, six weeks for me have been amazing. I've been approached by no shorter than five organizations to speak for them. Now, a lot of them either through referrals, some because of PSA website, others through good communication, and many is because they knew I was a speaker. And my calendars begin to fill up. I've been telling Tanya here the past uh, week and a half of my my schedule is going to fill up on weekends, which is exciting. And I'm actually being having double booking issues already. So we start having those. You know, things are are going well. Uh, yeah, and you know, this is kind of the reality of um, you know, as you're becoming, people always have the problem with the word famous. And it just means that people know you. There's more and more people that know you. Hey, Jim, can you um, mute yourself? Um, and so, you know, one of the things to look at as you started approaching kind of this maximum of, you know, you know, who you are, what you're out there doing, what is your message to the world? You're going to drive people to you, which is about building community. Right. This is one of the major things for you is mm -hmm. to build a community of like minded people so that when you meet somebody else, that person's already connected and it becomes this connection factor for referrals. Even on Blab the other day, I one of the ladies that we were on the show together, she was having some technical issues. So we just closed up this the um the show a little early. So I had 30 minutes. So I started playing around and going on to other people's blabs, just listening. And I jumped on this one. They were talking about testimonials. One of the guys that are on there was like, oh look, there's Tanya Hoffman. You need to get her on. I'm like, I didn't know this guy from Adam, right? <laughs> so you just don't know 
how you affect other people, right? And how you can change their life until you have that moment. Do you find that Janet, um, you know, that, that, kind of weird moment, but it's like very exciting I mean, that you realize you are I making an impact. I've been doing it so long to be honest with you, but yes, I mean, you know, you were talking earlier about making people cry. I always make people cry and um, it's not my intention to make people cry. It's just when people are moved, that's a natural expression of humanity. And that is always my intention is to leave people with an access to something they didn't have before. So it's, awesome yeah it's it's awesome and and you know and it's just like randall was asking you know they have this conflicting do you speak on one topic do you speak on multiple topics i never say no so people will tell me it's it's market research for small business owners really what speaking is you immediately find out what people see in you that they want more of and what they will buy from you. So you can go in and speak about anything because they will then start changing the topic as you're speaking, really. And if you're really good at kind of adjusting, it's kind of like, you know, open mic night, you know, you just kind of get in there and start. But don't yes. be so focused on one, be known for something. People know me for public, you know, kind of the business of speaking, but doesn't mean that they are not going to ask me I had a university call me up and I'm like, we've got a $5,000 budget. I know it doesn't, you know, hit your park. I'm like, don't worry about it. But they want me to come and talk about poverty. And I'm like, where in my repertoire of stuff <laughs> on my website doesn't say anything, doesn't say anything about poverty, right. but they saw that I could speak to their people about it. Right. From my past history and things like that. So you always say yes, because you just don't know where it, will take you and that could be the thing that sends you skyrocketing and but if you say can no, I speak to just one thing on that I think you have to be grounded in who you are and what you're standing for because you're you have to be believable so if you're trying you can't you know the fake it till you make it yeah. to a degree as a speaker but in terms of can I speak on this topic or that's you know let's, I'm not going to speak which end of politics, but if somebody asked me to speak to a political thing that I'm completely opposed to, I would say no, because it's so in, not in alignment with yeah. who I am. But oh, yeah. like I said, I'm speaking to a bunch of truck drivers, not my market at all, but I still can impact them because I was asked to speak about business growth for them. And I can speak to that market. So it's whatever, as long as you're grounded in who you are and your message and you're authentic, because that authenticity reads. People can smell inauthenticity a mile away and then um, be, be willing to create and to research. Yeah, I, I like, uh, I'll yeah. add something to that. So uh, I, I'm speaking at an event here in Toronto in a couple of weeks and I'm actually going to do a show on how to create your own TV show. And I've done Periscope for six months, Blab for three months, I have more than enough information to share and I might even do a Blab right there to show them. So I think you really have to expand, but people know me for networking and social media here in Toronto, which is great, but I want to expand what I do. So always expand it. Yeah. And what I've found too, and this is probably something y'all could both talk about too, is when you're looking at what you mainly speak about, you really are just kind of adjusting that towards the topic. So a lot of people are like, I don't know what to talk about. And I'm like, seriously, you've been a realtor for 20 years or whatever, right? Five years, one year, I don't care what it is. You can talk about customer service. You can talk about networking, building relationships. You could talk about sales. You could talk, you start looking at all the different varieties but it's still what you talk about, right? It's it's just different components. And so realistically, most um, any topic that people ask me to come and speak about, it's just right. about me tweaking what I already talk it, it, about. It's exactly what about you, you're Janet? saying. I absolutely, totally agree. It is a tweak, a little different spin on it. It's speaking to their audience. I, I book the speakers for an association I'm the VP of. Um, a women's association and 
I asked somebody who I think is a fabulous speaker to speak. She's a career person and I'm having her speak on networking in general. So it is partly hers, but then she's tweaking it to the audience. So if you're willing, like I said, if you know, know your topics or know where you stand, you can create anything. Absolutely. And Actually, let me come yeah. and speak to your we women's group. An email love to conversation. Help I absolutely want you to do that on public speaking because a lot of them want to be speakers and we're kind of too big to have people who've never spoken before yes. speak. We've tried that. It didn't go so well. Yeah, exactly. And Amy's asked again about the speaker's fee. We talked a little bit about it earlier in case y'all are just joining us. Um, most um, places nowadays don't give you a speaker's fee. So almost 90% are free speaking. And it's just a way to market yourself and your business. Um, even if you have a topic that doesn't really pertain to a business. So say if you want to talk about breast cancer, okay, because that's what I get a lot is people are like, I went through traumatic issues and I want to speak about that. But you can still take that and figure out something that it will correlate to. So say if you're a breast cancer survivor and you want to help people with breast cancer, you can also create a goal setting or something that relates to it. You know, I just went day to day and this is how I set my goals. That way you have something to sell afterwards. You have now a goal setting project or an accountability partner project or something like that, that you can then or on sell that topic, afterwards. If it's um, something traumatic and, you know, a lot of people have survived many traumatic things, whether it's cancer or a divorce or a loss of a child or something there, if you take it apart and you go, okay, what are the lessons I learned? And those lessons will be valuable to anybody yeah. in any walk of life. Exactly. I always bring up, you know, because I've been oh. robbed and tied up when I was six months pregnant. Um, I have had cancer. I've gone through traumatic issues with men in my younger life. We won't go into a lot of that. Um, I have a speech impediment that comes out. I could go over a lot of different things. It's something that I bring out and I use when it's mm -hmm. appropriate and I don't use when it's not. And so this is something also that you can use in kind of your bag. You know, there's some things I just don't talk about. Yeah, unless it's I like to add, <laughs> add one thing. I mean, I've worn out the word tweak. I've told Tanya this, tweak, tweak, tweak. Um, and uh, one of the stories that I'll share is just recently, I'm, I'm actually put, I put together a 12 week program for a bunch of uh, sort of uh, teenage students and you know, I start from scratch, and I tweaked it along the way. So I can tell you, um, just tweak. I mean, I have networking, but I have some areas of networking as far as follow up, um, as far as uh, types of systems to use, which what which use of social media. So uh, I can tell you, since joining the PSA, I've tweaked a lot of my talks over and over again, and I can't tell you enough that you should be able to do it no matter what industry you're in you can actually do that. So I've worn out tweaking. I've told my whole membership. I had Tanya yeah. mention it to my group <laughs> last year to say the word so they can hear it. But um, the, the last thing I just say is that you have to put yourself out there. And I think you won't know what you're good at unless you put yourself out there. And uh, that's what it is. Oh, oh. And make yourself uncomfortable, oh, I right? All the time. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you, Tanya can attest how nervous and a wreck I was when that lab wasn't working well. I was, I was going crazy. Guys, <laughs> click, try this, try that. Boof, we got it done. I, I was, I was, pit, I was really annoyed. But um, you know, it, it happens. Um, so one thing that I wanted to uh, um, maybe bring up is you talk about speaker fees and I think uh, you know the, the, the industry is changing mm -hmm. and I think that you, you should have an idea in case they do ask you but one of the things Tanya has has taught me is all is talk oh, yeah. to the organizer what do they pay for what have they bought I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that Tanya I think it's important to see that if you connect with the organizer of the organization ask them what have they bought webinars seminars can you talk a little bit about that, Tanya? Webinars, 
Yeah, you know, one of the things that uh, I can't obviously type in and talk at the same time um, is when you're looking at the creation of anything, there's the moments that things aren't going to work. And then how are you going to react to it? Because people watch, especially as a speaker, if you're going someplace, you have to talk to them about who's going to be there, what kind of people are going to be there, what age group, what do they usually buy, what do they not buy, what do they um, love, you know, connecting with you after about. The more information you can get from the event planner, the better. Because I've been in situations where I've seen other people not take these this very simple step of connecting with people and asking them questions. So, um, you know, there was an event, the people at that event, I found out only buy under $20. They'll buy books, they'll buy really small webinars, you know, group coaching and, you know, like under $20. <laughs> the person that came in that was with me and there was another speaker, they were offering like $500 packages. That person sold zero. I walked out, even though it was $20 a pop, I ended up making, a, you know, $3,000, $4,000 out of that group from that day, just because you're focused on what they want and what they're willing to pay for. And you always will find an extra person that wants the whole shebang that wants to be a big VIP client. Um, but it also works the other direction back. You know, if you find out that they normally will buy a fifteen hundred dollar package and you only come in with books, you let yeah, a I lot was just of talking money. to an organizer literally last night about an event I'm doing on March twelfth. And I said to him, What could I bring? And he says, You can bring a book, you can offer coaching, I have no restrictions. I'm like, perfect. So it's about asking those questions, and this is why I highly recommend a PSA because every month Tanya talks about different topics in your speaker business, speaker sheets and how to sell from the back of a room, all those are important. And um, so that's why I like these labs, you start understanding certain areas that are important um, in, in the conversation. Yeah, and it's really about connecting, you know, to fabulous people and going beyond that, you know, how do you help somebody? And this is always what most people don't want to do is they don't want to figure out how to kind of go beyond, um, how to uh, take that moment and not look at it as such a selfish moment, right? So I get people who are like, oh, Tanya, I want to speak at your conference. I'm like, Okay, and they're like, they go into this whole pitch about themselves, and then it never turns around. Mm -hmm. They never look at how are you going to help me, and that's what you've got to do is if I'm going to go speak at Janet's event, how am I going to help Janet? Not just, she already assumes I'm going to help her audience. She wouldn't even bring me in if I wasn't going to be there to bring value to her audience, but how am I going to bring value to Janet? I mean, that is massive. And if you could do that, you will be booked so much. If your your calendar will look like mine, okay? <laughs> and then you're playing with, if you're wanting to especially start to get into arenas that has your target market, and this is one of the things, um, come on in, Tim. This is one of the things that is incredible for leveraging opportunities is, if you're wanting to play with the big guys, then you've got to play with the big guys. You've got to play together and you've got to leverage. And that's what we're doing these blab shows um, at least. Morning, hey, girl. Tim, how are you? If y'all yeah. don't know Tim, y'all know to need to know Tim. He's going to be one of our speakers at my conference. I'm speaking by the way. <laughs> at your local chapter in Plano on Thursday. So. Oh, yay. Perfect. So, you know, you've got to go beyond just the moment of I want to get booked. You got to go to the moment of how can I help this person? That way I can get. Yeah, I got a great story. Tanya. You know? I was at the, my recent uh, at the Microsoft store in my area and I was doing the PSA events and I recently took them away. But I want to speak to the organizer. She says, could you help me? I'm actually doing a women's event on February the 27th. I need some speakers. I said, absolutely. Absolutely. I went back. I emailed a bunch of people. I found some speakers for an event. She sent me an email saying, thank you very much. I was struggling with this. It's all about helping them. And, and that's uh, such a powerful thing that Tanya said that I've been working on better is not just saying to organizer, I'll promote the event. What else can I do? Uh, you know, help them five, six, seven different ways. I think you did a talk last year, Tanya, about this. Really delve into it and yeah. do that. And you can 
that's all sales is about as far as I'm concerned anyway, is it's all about service. How can I serve you? And if you're not there for that, exactly, you, you're off and you'll never be successful. And it also is about, you know, looking um, beyond. Jim, Tim and I always laugh because, um, well, for one thing, it's all about the hair for us, you know. But, <laughs> you know, he was going to come down here to Austin to meet with me. I was going to end up being in, in Dallas. And I was like, hey, let me just come up there and I'm already going to be there. Let's just meet. When you're someplace, meet with people mm -hmm. in person. Mm -hmm. There is nothing more effective than sitting mm -hmm. down and having coffee. I've gotten, as a matter of fact, yeah, I've, gotten, I've gotten on planes think, to, draw, uh, to fly four hours to meet somebody for a lunch and fly, for a coaching session and fly back home. I've done that to L.A. because I've coached in L.A. And I've flown to L.A., rented a car, drove to his house, drove back to the airport, got on a plane, flew back home just to meet with him. You know what I mean? That's that's the important. Absolutely. I'm going to be in San Diego next week. What am I doing? I'm not just going to the conference to speak. I just started pushing out everybody that's in San Diego mm -hmm. that I wanted, I haven't met with or I want to reconnect with. Hey, let's have coffee. Let's have, you know, I'm going to be doing things in the evenings. I'm going to be doing things when the event's not going on. You know, reach mm -hmm. out and talk with people. Mm -hmm. I, I, took a, I took a page out of Heiner's book and I did that. Um, recently, I was uh, outside the city of Toronto, and I emailed a few people, and we met for lunch because I had about two hours um, between meetings. It's powerful, so I took I've done that recently. And Amy asked about um, pay to play, and absolutely, if you want to kind of supercharge a lot of times, sponsor. Yeah. Sponsoring things not only sets you apart from everybody else. That's how I started when I first started speaking is I would sponsor an event and it would give me stage time. So I was on stage with Deepak Chopra and Marianne Williamson. And I'm like, is this cool or what? <laughs> and nobody there knows that you had to, you know, that you pay to be paid to play, but it got me in front of people. And guess what? You got to meet with them all those fabulous people in the green room. You got to stand out as someone who's a player, someone who's um, really in business. You know, this is about being in yes. business. Yes. Do and do that I think you have to be cautious. I've screwed up there by being sponsoring things with people who, when I really look at them, their reputation and who they are doesn't jive with who I am. And I've, lost a lot of money that way. So I you know, don't, don't speak anywhere. Do the research. Is mm -hmm. that somebody you want to be connected with? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's an event happening yeah. here in Toronto here in August and the organizer sent an email looking for certain positions for this event. And one of them was uh, for speakers, help them with the speaker topics. I've attended spent three years in a row. I jumped at the chance because not that I just going to get to do that, I'm going to get to uh, uh, communicate with all the speakers. There's about 20 to 50 speakers at this event. So I'm like, you know, it's an awesome opportunity. So I think you have to look at those, evaluate them, and do them. And uh, I believe that you have to be on it. Like just today, uh, I'm actually having a meeting uh, Thursday at 1 o'clock with a speaker, and today by home with another speaker that I haven't, that I haven't spoken to in about a year. And I have a couple of projects that I want to tell them about, the PSA and a few others. So I'm having a connection. So I filled those gaps today where I, I'm having a face-to-face -face meeting and a virtual meeting. That's great. So I think you constantly have to do it. And I want to see why, what anybody else does in the area. Do you, do, do you fill in your gaps? Do you, uh, you know, because I have like three, 400 speakers. I don't know. So I don't know about Tim. Uh, I think I've heard Tim speak before maybe on Blab, but. Uh, And one of the things to look at, and we got to wrap up because I've got an appointment to go to. I just realized I can't believe it's almost already 11. So um, when you look at the speaking world, you have to get your name out there and you got to connect with the other speakers. And then you've got to develop the relationships with them, especially those that are already putting on their own events. And that's what's so great about connecting with other speakers anyways. We all put on our own events. Tim puts on his own event. Jim you know, does his you know, monthly chapter meeting. Janet has an event. We all do things. So that's if you really want to kind of bump yourself up into speaking, get connected. <laughs>
And I wanted to let everybody know that we've got upcoming a conference, public speakers conference is in Palm Springs, California in June. So June 26th through the 29th. And I put the link up there, it's public speakers with an S conference.com. Mr. Tim will be there. We are excited. Jim spoke at this last conference this, um, last year. And we got some of the major players that you need to know and learn from and connect to even more importantly. But while you're on that website, nominate yourself. We've got nominations are open. You can use the nominations forever, even if you don't win, but guess what, you might. So go to publicspeakersconference.com and you can nominate yourself or get someone to nominate you if you feel weird about it. Really, my panelists don't care if you nominate yourself. So it's local, national, international, collaborator of the year. So you can pick which category you want. We also have video contests, so you can submit submit under a five minute video. Please don't make it a professional video. It just get it, your message out there. And there's all kinds of categories, best business tip, best personal development, best personal story, best new speaker, or you know, whatever. There's lots of different categories for you to submit into. So that way you can get your message out there. And again, use that as an opportunity. Um, what else do y'all have going on real quick? Um, what can you connect them to, or do you have a free offer or something? Janet, what's your first? I've got a client too, and in about a minute, um, if people can connect with me through my emails, Janet at thezenithbusiness.com, or on my website, I do have a free offer, which I'm changing, but it's there for now. It's a seven, uh, seven session video on surefire sales strategy that I created. They're welcome to have that. We'd love to hear from people and support people, and Tanya will connect. Yay, perfect. How about you, Mr. Uh, Tim? Right now I'm putting together a, my first uh, online classes for Rock Around Your Blog. So um, just rockaroundyourblog.com. You can sign up for the classes and we'll get you an email notification the second they're available for you and the upcoming classes, see if it fits for you. Perfect. And Janet, make sure you put it into okay. the um, side there where they can get connected to you. Um, I, and how about you, I just Mr. actually Jim? posted a link there where you can download a number of chapters of, of my book from Get Connected in the 21st Century. My specialty does learn, speak, and socialize. You can download ebooks on presentation, LinkedIn, networking. Perfect. And we'll let everybody know that next Monday, the 15th, um, in the evening, I think. Now that I'm thinking about it, I can't remember what time. Yeah, 7 p.m. Central Time. I've got a full Blab training mm -hmm. on how to, how, why, how to make money from Blab, um, how everything you need to know, how to put it up on your website, how to promote it, how to use social media, you know, everything that you need to know, step by step, click by click. I'm going to show you every single little thing. So if you're interested in that, it's only $197. You can go to TanyaHoffman.com. Remember, Tanya is with an O. Hoffman's with one F, two N's, because my husband's family doesn't know how to spell it right. So TanyaHoffman.com. And I'd love to connect with y'all and help you with that. Thank you. So thank y'all all. Thanks for being on the show. You thank you. All right. Bye. Yay. Bye, everybody.